Hi and welcome to another WatchGeek video. Today I'll be doing a tutorial of the GBA 800 but this is part 2 of the tutorial where we're gonna see what the app brings to the watch. And if you wanna see the watch only functions I already did a video on that and I did it last week and you can check it out by clicking this link right here. So the first thing that we want to do is install the app. However, my tip to you is to turn on Bluetooth before you start installing. Otherwise, it's going to save you some time because uh, once you install the app, it's going to notice that the Bluetooth is not on. Then it's going to take you to the settings and you have to exit and then enter back. So this is simpler. Okay, go to the Play Store or iTunes, whatever app store, whatever phone you're using and just type in Casio. And of all these, you want to select this one, G-Shock Connected. So let's just install it. Accept. Once you have the app installed and you have the Bluetooth turned on, you just run the app. And the first thing that the app is going to ask you is what type of watch you're using. Since we're using the GBA 800, we're going to click that. And now the app is telling you to press and hold the lower right button for the watch and the phone to pair. Now whenever you pair the watch and the phone, the, the time of the phone gets transferred to the watch. So it updates and syncs the time, making the watch always accurate. Now to demonstrate that, I manually change the time on the watch. And as you can see, it's showing that it's uh, April, uh, April 20th and that it's 2245 when in fact this is the correct time. It's 2029 and it's uh, May 24th. So now we're going to initiate the pairing process so you can see just uh, the adjusting of the time. So press and hold this for two seconds and release. And now register the watch to the app. Yes. And now as it's getting paired, you're going to see how the watch updates the time and the date. There, it's already finished. And now as you can see, it's May 24th and the time is going to stop at the correct time, which is 2029 or 2029. Yes, there. And not only that, but if you look at the seconds, they're perfectly in sync with this other watch. And this is an atomic watch that synced last night. So this is accurate down to the second to the atomic clocks. And so is this. So they're perfectly in sync, making this watch always accurate. And not only does it always update the time and date and seconds whenever you connect to the phone, but it also does it automatically up to four times a day. So it will try to connect to the phone at 6.30 a.m. and p.m. and 12.30 a.m. and p.m., making it really more accurate than even this. Now, this connection that we just did with the two second press is actually one of three types of connections that you can do. And you do them, do them all with, press, with the press of this lower right button. The first type is the time adjusting only. So if you want to watch just to update the time, date, month and that, you just press this once. So it's just, an, just a one press and the, uh, the watch is going to activate the Bluetooth, connect to the phone. Once it updates the time, it's going to disconnect automatically. The second type is the one we just did, which is a two second press or until the first beep. And that's going to start the pairing process. And it's also going to connect the watch to the app so you can do all the settings and everything on it. And it's going to stay connected if you're not doing anything in the app for as long as it's set up in the app, which is something I will show you in a second. And the third type of connection is the phone finder. So if you press and hold this button for more than three seconds, it's going to beep the second time and it's going to initiate a phone finder where if this phone is within range and if the Bluetooth is turned on, the app doesn't have to be running. Uh, the watch is going to start ringing at the melody and at the volume that you set up in the app, which is again something that we'll demonstrate. Okay, so the watch is now connected and let's move to the app. We'll skip this short tutorial and the first thing that the watch is going to ask you is which units you're going to use, whether it's going to be metric or imperial. Since I'm using metric, we're going to leave it like this, press OK. Now the watch is going to ask you some personal data, your height, weight, uh, day of birth, sex and what your daily target of steps is going to be. Also whether you want the app to follow your, your movement uh, via map. Once you've adjusted all this, you click, you click send setting to the watch and setting completed. 
that's it. The reason why it asks all those data is because in the activity tracker, while if you're using a, f uh, a watch only, it can just count the steps for each day and that's it. And it will display graphically for each day how many steps you did. However, in the app, it's actually gonna calculate how many calories you spent depending on your activity level and the information you just entered. However, we're gonna leave this for now. And the first thing that I'm gonna do is go into the settings tab. Now in the settings, you select GBA 800. And the first thing, uh, and as, as you can see, the settings are divided between the app and the watch settings. Now in the app settings, this profile settings actually takes you to what we just did. So you can change this whenever you want, if you gain weight or lose weight in this profile settings. Also the unit settings are right here, so you can change them as well. That's it. And whenever you change something, it doesn't automatically change on the watch until you press this send setting to the watch. Let's go back. The second setting is the, the phone finder setting where you can, like I said, determine which melody you would like to use and you have a choice of three and how loud would you like for the phone finder to be. And we're gonna show you how that works right now. So let's exit, let's disconnect the watch and the phone. We're gonna exit the app and log the phone. So let's say you just left your phone somewhere in the house and you can't find it. You will take the watch and as you can see the Bluetooth is turned off and press this for more than three seconds until there's a find written right here. So let's do it. Hold, still hold, and there, find. And now the watch is gonna try to establish the connection to the phone and make it start ringing. And it just did. When you wanna stop it, press this button on the phone and the phone just went quiet so pretty cool feature let's go back to the app start the app and connect the phone with the two second press connection completed okay let's go back into the settings tab gba 800 so these were the app settings now let's go to the watch settings now here you have the watch display settings where you can choose whether to watch, whether you want to watch the display uh, military time or have the AM PM indicator. Since I prefer military time, this is what we're gonna have. Then the operation sound where you can basically turn uh, the mute function on, whether you want to watch to uh, beep when you operate the buttons or not. Again, you can turn it to off or on. Then you have the time for connecting to the app. Over here is what I said, that once you connect the watch to the app and you're not doing anything in the app, you can select how, how long the watch is gonna stay connected before it automatically disconnects. So it can be three minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes. The next one is the time adjustment. Here you can simply turn off the automatic time adjustment if you don't want the watch to connect four times a day to your phone. The next setting is the light setting where you can choose whether you want the auto light to be on or off. And the auto light, like I explained in the other video, is when you tilt the watch to your face, it will automatically light up. And also the duration of the backlight, whether you want three seconds or one and a half seconds. Let's go back. Then the adjusting of the home position, but we'll get back to that after we do the summertime setting for home time. Here you can basically set up the DST setting for, for your time. You can put it to auto, to on or off. I leave it to auto because the phone does get the DST setting, so it's always gonna be correct. And it's automatically gonna change uh, between uh, between the summertime and wintertime. And over here you have the disconnect button. And when it's uh, when the phone is disconnected, this button changes to delete pairing data. And this is something you will do when you want to transfer watch to, a, to another phone or if you experience problems while connecting. So let's get back to the adjusting the home positions. However, please give me a minute first to mess up the hands on the watch. So I'll see you in a second. Okay, so we're back. Now, the adjusting of the home position is adjusting and setting 
the home position of the hands and this is something that you will have to do every time when you change the battery because these this watch when each any Casio watch when you change the battery it assumes that it's midnight because it gets reset so unless you change the, ma the battery exactly at midnight the hands are gonna get messed up so to check the hands you simply click on any one of these I'll click on the minute hand because it's connected to the hour hand anyways so it really doesn't matter press 2 and now the watch is gonna uh, the app is gonna put the watch in this position and now you're supposed to take the watch and check whether the hands are like this and as you can see I messed them up because my hands are showing 905 when they should show 9 o'clock sharp now some people have the logic that you're supposed to move to, uh, to the left because this hand is is right from its reference position however you're not actually adjusting the hands of the watch but you're adjusting the hands of the app to match the watch in other words the watch just told you I believe my hands are in this position is that true and then you tell him no it's not and then it's, it's like it's asking you so where are they so I know how to set up the hands so you're basically have to tell the watch how its hands are positioned and as you can see these hands are positioned to 905 exactly because I just messed them up so what you do is use this hour and go right until it's 905 now you're telling the watch this is how your hands look at the moment and you press send setting to the watch and the watch is gonna correct the hands and it already did it and that's pretty much it now you can also do it on phone only and you can check out in that in my other video both both methods are pretty simple like I said you just have to remember that the logic is that the watch is asking you to tell it where the hands are and not actually moving the hands of the watch so you wouldn't do if you if you go that way you're gonna mess it up even more if you know what I mean okay go back and that's pretty much it when it comes to the settings so once we go back to the main screen the first screen that it's going to show up is the activity uh, so in the activity screen you can see that uh, today's activity which is that we did 8862 steps and spent 1541 calories now this gray line represents our uh, today's activity this thin line represents the goal and this is how much of the goal we have achieved so 88 percent also here you can see it for different for different days uh, what the activity was and these empty ones are no activity at all again gray lines are the activity and these green parts are when you exceed your your target or uh, the target of 10,000 steps now you can go for today's activity to see in detail how it looks where you're gonna have the map data you're gonna have the daily activity for each hour as you can see and you can share it so it will tell you how much you did you can also go to weekly and once you go to weekly it's actually going to show you things like like average steps highest steps uh, times when you achieved your goal or exceeded it how many calories you consumed in total and your average calorie consumption per day and you can also do it with the monthly it's the same thing since I haven't had to watch for that long it's probably gonna be the same as the weekly and you can go through different days like this or different months and that's pretty much it so let's go back the way you can enter these is also if you press all activity it's gonna show you the calendar and now you can select any day you want to view the details of that day so if you click details it's gonna tell you how many calories you spend and all that and how many steps so pretty straightforward okay let's move on the next function is the countdown timer now this watch like I said has a 60 minute countdown timer but it can be divided in, into five intervals of 60 minutes so basically you get five consecutive timers and they can also be repeated up to 20 times so uh, currently on the watch this timer is set up so let's see how it works go to detail so this timer as you can see has a total of 13 13 minutes and it's going to repeat itself five times however it consists of three intervals the first interval is 10 minutes which is displayed right here then you have an interval of two minutes and an interval of one minute so one two three and once these complete they're going to repeat for five times 
giving you an hour and five minutes. So to change this, you go to edit, and now you can simply change the number of, of sets or auto repeats to four, three, two, whatever, and you can go up to 20, like I said. Then each one of these, of these timers can be changed to the desired time. So let's say I want the first one to be five minutes instead of uh, 10 there as soon as you do it as you can see the total has also changed also the watch can give you this color coding if you let's say you're working out one exercise then second then you want to do the rush and you have rest so let's add another one which is going to be one minute this is going to be the last one okay so now we have four timers or four intervals within a timer and we want this work to be workout b so we're doing one thing, then we're doing another thing, then we have the workout three, which is going to be rush, giving our best and then what we can do. And then number four, we're going to color code it to uh, number, oh, sorry, now I messed up, number three. Number four, we're going to put it to rest. So this is now a workout where we're doing one exercise, then the second exercise, then we really blast it, and then we rest. And we're going to do four sets of that. And that's pretty much it. Press save. And you just uh, did this timer, send setting to the watch, and this timer has been sent to the watch. So pretty simple and pretty straightforward. Now, this is something that you can also do on the watch, and I explain it in my watch only video. However, where the app gets better than the watch is when you go to all timer. And in all timer, you can add up to 20 different timers. You just give them a name, let's say like this, okay and save and now you created three timers the one with the symbol of the watch means that this one is active on the on the on the watch and the cool thing is if that you can set up up to 20 of these timers so you can have one for i don't know cooking an egg another one for monday workouts another one for tuesday workouts and so on now on the watch only you would have to program each countdown timer every day however like this you simply select the timer that you want for that day, click on it and say send setting to the watch. And it's as simple as that and it's finished. Now you just you just sent this timer to the watch and when we go into the all timers, all the timers, you can see that this one is active on the watch while these two are not. So a pretty cool way of getting as many timers as you want for different activities. Okay, the next function is the stopwatch. Now, in my watch only video, I explained that this watch has both the lap stopwatch, uh, a split stopwatch, and also has a target time. Now, to set up the target time, you go to the setup, and over here you can turn on or off the target. Once you turn on the target, you can add up to 10 target times. Now, this is very good, like I explained in that video, for pacing yourself or your workouts or your races. So let's say if you're running 10 laps, you can set up uh, 10 targets of how long you want to run the lap for and run the stopwatch. Now, the stopwatch is going to measure no matter what you do. However, it's going to start beeping at the predetermined target time. So if you're too slow, you know that you have to raise your pace. If you're too fast, you can lower your pace. So a pretty cool feature. So you can select the target, put it to any time you want. Target number two, any time you want again. Let's say like this. Target number three. Like this. And that's it. So now I just set up three targets. And if I send settings to the watch, the, the watch is going to have stored three targets. And when I run the stopwatch, it's going to beep at seven seconds, then at 18, then at 34. And that's pretty much it. Now, another thing that you can do is since the watch has 200 uh, lap memory or split time memories, and after those 200, it's going to start deleting them. However, you can import them into the app by pressing this log import. And the app is going to pull all the data that's in the watch when it comes to stopwatch. And then you go into the stopwatch log to view the data that was stored. Now, if you watched my watch only video, I explained that if you're running the stopwatch as a lap, lap stopwatch, you'll be able to see only lap times. You won't be able to see the total time because it's just displayed like that. If you run a split stopwatch, you'll be able to see the split times and the total time, but you won't be able to do the lap times. However, in the app, it doesn't actually matter how you run the stopwatch. So this 
First one is a lap stopwatch and the second one is a split stopwatch. And now when I go into the first log, which was a lap stopwatch, I will see the lap data. As you can see, these are the laps. However, the watch also tells you what your best lap was, what your worst lap was, what your average was, and it also marks these laps right here. However, you can also see the total time, which is something that's not available on the watch. Now, as you can see, you have here a split. So if you press on the split tab, it's going to view at this stopwatch like a split stopwatch. So instead of lap times, it's going to display the split times like so. Okay, let's go back. Also, if we select this, which was a split stopwatch, it's going to show it to us as a lap stopwatch. And we can view it also as a split or a lap stopwatch with all the average times and everything and total times. And I really love that they thought of this because they could have just left it like it was on the watch. Once it, uh, it, once it pulls the data from the watch, a lap stopwatch could have been a lap stopwatch, a split stopwatch could have been a split stopwatch. However, they went the extra mile and made calculations because for you to turn a split stopwatch into a lap stopwatch, all you have to do is use some arithmetic to subtract from, from, from split time, subtract the previous lap or the previous split time to get lap times. And that's what they did. Also on the lap stopwatch, they got the split times by simply adding times to the lap. So the total time added to the next lap will give you a split time. Naturally, you can delete any of these by pressing delete and then mark which ones you want to delete and they're gonna be deleted. Well, that's it when it comes to the stopwatch. Let's go to the next function. The next function is the world time. Now, again, like I said in my watch only video, on the watch, it's a simple dual time. However, here it becomes a world time where you can click on the world time. And now you just type in the city that you want the watch to be set for. So let's say London. And now our world time is gonna be London. So send city to the watch. it's much easier than manually adjusting the time that you have to do on the watch because for for you to do that you need to know what the time is in that given time zone however over here all you have to do is search the city that you want and that's it again it also has the time swap function so once you fly to that time zone all you have to do is press this button right here and the times are going to get swapped and again if you want to send the settings to the watch like so the time on the watch is also going to change so now the main time is going to be london time and your home time is going to become the world time again you can swap it back and it's pretty pretty easy and pretty simple send setting to the watch and that's it now please note that this only works when the when the watch is connected so if when the watch is not connected and you go into the app and into the world time this is going to be grayed out so you cannot change it until the watch is connected just so you don't think that something is wrong and the last function that the watch has i mean that the app has is the utility i don't know why they call it utility but it's the five alarms and the sig or the hourly chime and this is as straightforward as one can get because it's the same as setting up the alarm on your phone so you press alarm one you put it to on and now the watch asks you what time you want the alarm set for you can change the hours the minutes and send setting to the watch and now you just turned on the alarm number one on the watch and you can do it like that for any of these alarms including the hourly chime that can only be turned on or off if you turn it on the watch, the watch is going to beep every hour. If you turn it off, it's going to remain silent. And that's pretty much it. So as you can see, the app does add some additional functionalities. And what's even better, it makes setting certain things a lot simpler than, than on the watch. Now, for people like me and other watch geeks that are used to playing with G-Shocks for years, setting all these things on the watch comes as a natural. However, to other people to regular people especially younger kids i mean kids younger people who are used to smartphones and the way you set up things on the smartphone this is going to become very natural and they don't have to learn how to operate and read those thick manuals so this is a pretty cool way of making these accessible and usable for everyone
Well, this pretty much completes the part two of the tutorial for the GBA 800. So to know absolutely everything about the watch, make sure to watch uh, part number one. And I also did a review. So if you want to check that out, please do. I would also like to thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed and found it useful. If you did, please like and subscribe. And until the next video, bye.